Hello, everybody. My name is Vasant Patha Saradi. I am a master mariner, presently working as a faculty with HIT College, Kalpakam. The topic which I chose to discuss with you all today is star identification with the help of star constellation. For a ship navigator, star identification is very important. In the earlier days, we used to plot the ship position by taking star sight during twilight times by using star finder. Nowadays, after the invention of GPS, star sights are very sparingly used because GPS is very accurate. But what about finding the error of the compass by using stars during night time? We must use the star finder. As you all know, finding out the star by using star finder takes certain amount of time. As a true navigator, we should be able to find, to identify the star by looking at the sky. We should be able to do this by knowing star constellation. Unless we know what is star constellation, it is very difficult to identify the star. Now, what is star constellation? Let us study. A constellation is a group of stars in the night sky that makes up a recognizable picture or pattern. The shape they may take includes animals, objects, people. Many of the human shapes pattern have been named after mythological figures from the ancient world. Constellations have many uses in astronomy, navigation, farming, and storytelling. How many constellations are there? Well, there are actually 88 major constellations in the skies. But we can't identify, see all of them at once. And some of them are nearly impossible to see without help of telescope, especially the ones that are brightest during the day. We need not know all. What we need to know is the important ones which are given in the nautical almanac and easy to recognize. In the almanac, there are 59 stars and four planets. The important constellations are Orion Belt, Cans Major, Cans Minor, Ursa Major, Ursa Minor, Cassiopeia, Taurus the Bull, Pegasus the Flying Horse, Leo the Lion, including Sickle, and the Southern Cross. Now let us study about the first constellation, Orient Bell. In the Greek mythology, Orient was a giant and very handsome hunter. He was a hunting companion of the huntress goddess Artemis, and both were in love. Artemis' brother Apollo was jealous of her love with Orion, planned Artemis to kill Orion without her knowledge. Then her father Zeus, the king of gods, immortalized the giant huntsman by placing him in the sky as a constellation. In other versions, according to Greek with might, Orion led a tragic life that ended when he stepped on a scorpion known as Scorpio. The gods felt sorry for it, so they put him and his faithful dogs, Cans the Major, Cans the Minor, close to him into the sky as a constellation. There on the right hand side, you can see the picture of the Orion with a club in his hand and a beast, right? And he's fighting the, the bull, Taurus the bull. Okay. When is Orient Belt visible for us? The best time to see Orient Belt is between November and March for the Northern and Southern Hemisphere. The seasonal change are that in the autumn, Orient Belt, Orient Belt would be visible in the morning sky before dawn. As you move in, into December and January, it's best around midnight. And then as you move into the spring, sky, it becomes best in the evening. It's easy to spot and in good position until March. And then in March and April, it disappears into the twilight. It's harder to see after that. 
Now, another constellation which is located very close to the Orient Belt is the small dog. Can that is small dog in recognizing as one of the hunting dogs of Orient following behind through the night sky. Majority of the myth and historic reference of Cancer Minor are shared with Cancer Major. It is in close proximity and shares stories with a significant winter constellation. It is a popular constellation for amateur staggers. That for amateur staggers. The brightest star in the Cancer Minor is the star Procyne. Next comes the Cancer Major. Cancer Major is one of the 48 constellations originally catalogued by the Greek astronomer Ptolemy in the 2nd century. Its name means the greater dog. In Latin, it represents the larger of Orient two hunting dogs who accompany him as he hunts Lepus the rabbit. The brightest star in Can the Major is Sirius. Now, let us visually see how the Orient and the stars located in relation to the Orient in the night sky. This is how it looks. Gentlemen, you can see this is how the picture of the Orient belt look in the bright skies. See, one, two, three, four. These are the arms of the Orient and these are the legs of the Orient and this is the belt. Now, this is the belt of the Orient. Join this belt. And the two arm, four arm. This is the star Betelgeuse, the left arm Betelgeuse, the right arm is Bellatrix, then the leg is Rigel, and the fourth one is the unknown star, not used for navigation. And then the center of the belt is known as star Alnilam. Now join this belt, join this three star belt and produce down. It comes to a bright star. In the constellation, Can is the major, and the brightest star is Sirius. Then, as I told you, Sirius is in the constellation of Can is the major. Drop perpendicular line from here, it goes to Can is the minor, and the bright star in Can is the minor is Procyne. And join the arc Sirius and Procyne and protrude still further, you meet the twin star, the two Gemini stars, Castor and Polex. And keep continuing. Still further, you need another bright star in another constellation known as Capella. And Capella. Okay. Then we come back to the Orient Belt again. So join the line Sirius and Bellatrix. I repeat, join the line, the star Sirius and Bellatrix in the Orient Belt and produce it further. It goes and meets another bright star in the constellation Taurus the Bull and the brightest star in the Taurus Bull is known as Aldebaran. And produces Aldebaran still further, you meet another star, Haman and Aries. So, gentlemen, just with the uh, Orient Belt, we have seen uh, quite a lot of stars. Now, let us go on to the next constellation, Ursa the Major and Ursa the Minor. As I told you, what are they? Ursa the major actually means greater bear and Ursa the minor means smaller bear. They are found close together in the night sky. You might know these constellations as the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper because parts of each of the bears look like ladles or dippers. Ursa minor, which in Latin means lesser bear, contrasting with Ursa the Major, also known as Little Bear, is a constellation located in the far northern sky. Now, who is Ursa the Minor in relation to Ursa the Major? In Greek mythology, Ursa Minor is Arcus, the son of Zeus, and the maiden Callisto, Ursa Major. Arcus and Callisto were changed into bears and placed in the sky by Zeus in order to to be protected from his jealous wife, Hira. Within the constellation of Ursa Minor can be found the North Star Polaris. Now, the greater bear and the little lesser bear. The greater bears are the constellation known as Ursa the Majors and Ursa Minor, or the greater bear and the lesser bear. 
the stars that make up these constellations are almost always visible in the northern hemisphere only. Now, the Ursa constellation, the constellation of Ursa Minor, the constellation of Ursa Minor, the little bear, is also commonly known as Asterin of the Little Dipper. Ursa Minor has helped sailors and navigators for thousands of years find the North Celestial Pole and guide them on their journey. In Greek mythology, there are many versions of story of the greater and lesser bear. In general, the story follows the woman Callisto, who is turned into a bear by one of the gods. When her son Arcas meets her in the forest and is about to shoot her as a bear, Zeus turns him into a bear also. At this point, Zeus placed them close together in the northern sky. Okay, next we come to another constellation known as Kesupia. Now, as you know, Kesupia is the shape of a chair. Let us study what is Kesupia. Kesupia, who is Kesupia? Kesupia was a queen in ancient Greek mythology. According to legend, she boosted. She was more beautiful than the sea nymphs called the Nereids. Her boost angered Poseidon, god of the sea, who sent a sea monster, Cetus, to ravage the kingdom. To pacify the monster, Cassipia's daughter, Princess Andromedia, was left tied to a rock by the sea. Cetus was about to devour her when Perseus, the hero, looked down upon her from Pegasus, the flying horse. Perseus rescued the prince and all lived happily. There on the right hand, uh, right hand side, you can see a picture. This is a picture of the Cassiopeia in a chair. Now, the gods were so pleased that all of these characters were elevated to the heavens as stars. Only Cassiopeia suffered an indignity. Her vanity caused her to be bound to a chair and placed in the heavens so that as she revolves around the north celestial pole, she is sometimes in an upside down position. You can see this? See, see like, like this is what the W. So you can see this? This is what the W in the heavenly skies. Now, the next star constellation we will see is Taurus. Taurus is known as the bull also. Taurus is a large and prominent constellation in the northern hemisphere winter sky. Between Aries to the west and Gemini to the east, to the north lies Paris and Arugia. It is located very close to Orient Belt. In late November, early December, Taurus reaches opposition furthest point from the sun and is visible the entire night. By late March, it is setting at sunset and completely disappears behind the sun's glare from May to July. The famous star, the brightest star in the constellation Taurus Bull is the star Aldebaran. Next comes the constellation Pegasus. Pegasus is a constellation in the northern sky named after the winged horse Pegasus in Greek mythology. It was one of the 48 constellations listed by the 2nd century astronomer Ptolemy and is one of the 88 constellations recognized today. Then we come to another constellation known as, known as Leo constellation. It is one of the zodiac constellations and one of the largest constellations in the sky. Leo represents the lion and is usually associated with the name lion in Greek mythology. Denebola and Regulus are the prominent stars in this constellation. Now, how do you find the north? How do you find the north with the constellation Cassiopeia? Okay, as you can see, this is Cassiopeia in the form of inverted W. And this has got two angles. The red one is known as acute angle and the blue one is known as obtuse angle. Now you bisect both angles. Now you bisect the acute and obtuse, obtuse angle. Let's see what happens. When you bisect the obtuse the, and acute angle, both the red and blue, 
they meet exactly, they meet at a point. That point is known as north point. I repeat, when you bisect the blue, blue and red angle, they meet at a point which is exactly north pole. Let's go a little, exactly slightly to the south of the north pole, very close, there's a bright star, and that star is known as Polaris. This star is known as Polaris and is very useful for navigators. Now, from Polaris, we proceed further, very close, we'll find the, another constellation, Orsa, the major, that is greater there. Now, how do you find north with the summer triangle in the northern hemisphere? There you can see an isosceles triangle, that is two sides are equal and one not equal. That is, in this triangle, A is equal and B is not equal. And the stars in this triangle are Deneb, Altair and Vega. Bright stars in the sky. And little south of this Thomas triangle is Cassiopeia chair. And very close to Cassiopeia chair is Ursa the Major. Next, we'll come to Ursa the Major. And stars located in relation to the Dipper. As you know, Ursa the Major is also known as the Dipper. Let us see what are the stars are associated around this constellation Dipper. Okay, as you all know, this Dipper is the shape of a bear. See, this is the body of the bear and this is the tail of the bear. Now, let us identify all the stars of the bear. The head of the bear is known as Dube star. Then comes Merak here. Then this part is known as Pekada star and Megra. See, there are four stars around this. And then the tail, the three tails are Alioth star, Nizar star, and Alkate star. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stars we identified in this deeper constellation. Now, join this Barak and Dubai and produce it. Join this Barak, Dubai and produce it and meet at the pole star. This is Polaris. Okay. And then, keep producing the Polaris further. You meet at the star, Cassiopeia chair. This is the Cassiopeia chair. Okay. Now, get back to the Great Bear. And then, produce the tail. This is the tail of the great bear. Produce it. And it meets to the, as the tail is projected, it goes and meets at a bright star. And this bright star is known as Arcturus. And keep producing still further. It meets another star known as Pika. Now join Arcus Pika and another star which is close to this. These form the equilateral triangle meets at Dendobola. So I repeat, Arcturus, Spica, and Denobola form that equilateral triangle. So, gentlemen, you can see how many stars you can identify by knowing at the single star. Now, produce Arcturus and Denobola further. May draw a parabola between star Arcturus and Denobola. You will come to another star known as Regulus. As I told you earlier, Denobola and Regulus are in the constellation Leo. And the regular star is right behind the star Dubai. That is the, the great bear. Okay. Now, so far, we have seen quite a number of stars. All the stars, what we have seen, are all in the northern hemisphere. Now, let us see what are the important stars you will come to know in the southern hemisphere. In the southern hemisphere, there is a constellation known as Cruz. Cruz is a constellation of the southern sky that is centered on four bright stars in a cross shaped asterism, commonly known as the Southern Cross. In the Northern Hemisphere, the Southern Cross is frequently used for navigation in much the same way that Polaris is used in the Northern Hemisphere. Now let us see what the Southern Cross and the stars located in relation to the Southern Cross, Southern Crosses. Now, this is the Southern Cross. The first Southern Cross is A Cruz, B Cruz, 
Delta Cruz and Gamma Cruz. See, this is A Cruz, B Cruz. Now join this Southern Cross and pro produce it straight. What happens? This is this is known as Alpha Cruz. This south of this known as Beta Cruz, and this is Gamma Cruz. And the two stars trying just below the Beta Cruz is Rigel Cantarus. Just below Beta Cruz is a bright star known as Cantarus. Now draw a perpendicular line, then. From the center, gamma cruz and a cruz, draw a parabolic curve like this. You will identify two bright stars. One is Mephalaris, another one is Canopus. Just near the Anopolis, near the Canopolis, you will find another bright star, Achenar and Alopches. They form a right angle triangle. Canopolis, Apolopches, and Achana form a right angle triangle. This invert this triangle, invert the triangle to the other side. You find another right angle triangle where Rigel Kent, Scorpio, and Peacock. All these are very, very close by. If you identify one, everything are close by, closely associated. You can identify Peacock, Rigel Kentis, and Antares. Then very close to you will find another for near Peacock. To the right of the peacock, you find peacock, form a halt, and achana. They also form another equilateral triangle. So, gentlemen, quite a, these are the few stars we would come to know from the southern. These are the few stars identified in the southern hemisphere. Now, let us fix the south pole. How you fix the south pole? Just as how the Polaris fix the north pole, how you fix the south pole? Here is the southern cross. And very close to the Southern Cross is the pointer. Just protrude this. What you do? The, the, this, this line you produce and bisect this pointer. I'll show you. The Southern Cross protrude this straight and the pointer you bisect, they meet. Where they meet is exactly South Pole. This is known as the South Pole. Okay. Okay, gentlemen. These are the few stars. I think these stars are quite sufficient enough for you to identify. If you can identify these stars, that will be enough for you to take the error of the compass. Hope you enjoyed the star identification. With this, I end. Thank you very much.